Welcome back to the Simple Car Guy channel. In this video, we're replacing the coolant pump on my Mini Cooper S R56. Check out my previous video on troubleshooting and how I came to the conclusion that I need the coolant pump replaced. This was about 60 bucks on eBay. Uh, I ordered the Fabi, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, of this brand of the coolant pump. Uh, there's of course OEM, a few different ones. This one seemed to have really good reviews and probably a third of a price of the OEM version of the pump. Let's get cracking and disassembling the car and get into the coolant pump. First step of course is to jack up the car, which I've already done and I put it on jack stands just to make it a little bit easier. The next thing is to remove the front wheel on the right side. The next step is to remove the front wheel arch cover. I'm filming this part after I already finished the replacement of the cooling pump on the Mini Cooper S. Uh, I know this is a long video, but check out the description. I'm going to include the main important parts uh, with the times where you can click on and just go to that part of the video. That way, if you don't want to see all the details of replacing the cooling pump, you can just go straight there and get the parts that you need. Now that we have removed the wheel arch liner, we have access to a lot more things in the engine. As you can see, the water pump is somewhere in there. There's a little bit more work to do, of course. But before we start disconnecting anything to do with coolant, we of course need to drain the actual coolant out of the car. And that's done using that pipe uh, right there. So as you can see, there's two connections in there. We're gonna disconnect one of them and just drain everything out of the system. So as you can see, this is the coolant hose that I was talking about just a minute ago. I put one of these funnels that I just made and loosened one of these uh, clamps, hose clamps. I don't know if you can see them, but there's, there was one on each side. I loosened it and moved it out of the way. Then put a screwdriver into the between the clamp and the hose just to open it up a little bit. Now it's draining slowly into the can. As you can see, it I spilled a few drops of other than that. It's pretty good. That's how it's all working here. So that's the clamp that I loosened. Just put a screwdriver in there so it uh, allows it to flow better. And it's slowly flowing. I'm not in a rush, so I'm just gonna let it drain out. I loosened the cap. It goes a lot faster, otherwise it was just dripping. That bird doesn't let me film properly with all that noise. Anyway, uh, now that the coolant is drained, we can get to actually removing the water pump. Now I've seen a few videos on YouTube where people are disassembling basically half the car. Uh, I'm trying to avoid that. So what I'm trying to do is remove it through the wheel, ar uh, wheel arch. Uh, the manual says to actually remove this friction gear which is right here. But that just seems like a lot of work in addition to doing the actual water pump because it goes all the way up there and there's a couple bolts in there that are very difficult to get to. So what I'm gonna try to do is remove those three bolts from that pulley. Uh, the water pump is right behind that. So I'll try to remove uh, those using one of these wrenches. I went to Harbor Freight and got one of these bendable ones that ratchet. So that will allow me to go in there and ratchet it out. Um, hopefully that's gonna work. Let's see. One thing that we definitely want to do is putting the friction gear in the service position. To do so, we're gonna pull on this tension strap until it comes out and puts it in the position. And then you just lock it in place right there the light so hopefully you can see better but basically this is the strap you pull it out and then it clips in right there
second one. Third one. This one was a little bit more of a pain in it. Should be able to take it out now. And it's completely loose. Not sure if you guys can see, but the pulley was in this space right here. So what I've started to do is I'm pushing it in through the back of the engine so that I don't have to take the friction gear out. It's still a pain in the butt, but at least it looks like it might be coming out. So still a little bit to go, but it takes, you know, some time to work it out of there. I'm not gonna film everything as I can't really see what I'm doing exactly, but basically I'm trying to get the pulley out the other way. Well, this part's a little tough. I've been probably going for about 40 minutes and I managed to remove that bolt, that one over there, and the one hiding behind there. That one I was able to loosen but it's just so far away where I can't reach it with my hands to like take it out. And going half a millimeter at a time with a wrench is just taking forever. So this is a pain, but I think it, I still think it's doable without removing uh, this thing. Because for to remove this, you also have to remove these bolts that are like way in the back, and you can't get anything in there on unless you have the specialized tool from BMW. After probably another 20, 30 minutes, I finally got that last bolt out. So now I can just pull out uh, the water pump. Hopefully it'll come out easy. I'm sure it won't. Everything's been kind of hard on this one. All right, so after I removed all of the bolts, I pulled on it just with my hands and it pretty much came out. So as you can see, it's all loose now. Now we just have to guide it out of here. I'm gonna try to get it out through the back the same way I did the pulley. The pulley is already hanging, hanging out over there. A little bit of coolant did come out, so be careful guys and put something underneath. It's probably been another 10 to 15 minutes of struggling. And now I finally got it to this point. Now you can pretty much wiggle around certain things and get it out. There it is. Wow, what a pain. I was definitely not expecting it to take this amount of work to get it out. As I mentioned earlier, looking at the history of this car, it looks like the water pump was replaced about a year ago, maybe a little bit like a year and a half ago. And you know, I was wondering why did it go bad? Well, turns out this is one of those super cheap aftermarket ones that are about $20, $30 on eBay. Don't get those. One of the ways you can differentiate is by looking at this shaft. It's longer than, uh, than this part. So if you look on a better quality one, it's not nearly as long. I mean, I know it's not much, but it definitely counts. Uh, and the design should be more like this and not uh, one of their own. This will also make it a little bit easier to get it in there as those few millimeters do make a big difference when you're working with just a few millimeters of clearance. So I just finished prepping the area. All I did was clean it up a little bit, make sure there's no debris or anything like that. Now I'm going to have to take my new water pump and get it somehow into that spot right there.
not even joking, this took probably another 30 minutes to get it in here. But this is the position that you want it to be for it to go in. It won't go in any other way. The hardest part here is sliding past that frame rail. So I just angled it this way and then kind of give it a little push with a screwdriver until it passed that part of the frame rail right there. Uh, now, now I can just put it in position, should be easy enough. All right, so I put that bolt in by hand as well as that one. And I have three or four left. Pretty much not very easy to get it in there, but possible. I put a little piece of a uh, magnet on my screwdriver to get them into the hole and then lightly screw them in with my fingers if I can reach. I haven't done that last one. We'll see if I can get that one in and if I have any advice. Other than that, get them in there, screw them in. I believe the torque for this is eight uh, newton meters. Not that you can get a torque wrench in here but it just gives you an idea of how tight you should make them. And this is how I'm reaching the hard to get one. same for the top one well it definitely wasn't easy but all the bolts are in my fingers are a little scraped but they're all in as you can see now I'm just gonna tighten them as hard as I can from the space that I have and we should be good to go now we can put the pulley back on and start filling the car with coolant all the bolts are in and tight we're gonna take our pulley put it back in its place it's also a little bit of a struggle getting it in there. But if you're car careful enough and struggle for a bit, you'll get it in there. It's not nearly as hard as the water pump, but basically just in this direction, wiggle it until it gets in. A minute or so, I got it in. Make sure it's facing the correct way. It should be facing just like that. Now I can just line it up, put a screw in, and tighten it. Should be ready to go. Now that we have those bolts by hand, we can make it a little bit easier for us to tighten it by releasing the friction gear. So that's just gonna be just in right here. Pull on it, release, slowly push it back in. Okay, now this should engage and the wheel won't spin as easy. So let's get them all nice and tight. Of course, don't forget to put the clamps back on the hose on the bottom of the car. Otherwise, when you start filling the coolant, you're gonna have a bad time. Now we're just gonna fill the car with coolant. 50-50 ratio on this one, this is a concentrate. So I'm just gonna put maybe half and then half a gallon of water and just keep going until the car is full. Start the car, run it for a little bit. Keep adding as the coolant gets distributed through the system and the car warms up. You will then check for leaks, make sure nothing is leaking anywhere and then take the car for a ride. That's the location of the venting screw that you wanna loosen whenever you're adding coolant. That way all the air comes out. So the car has now warmed up. As you can see, the pool and pump is turning. That's good. I'm not seeing any drips. So I'm gonna let it run for 10 15 minutes, let it fully warm up, and then just put the arch wheel arch liner back on and the tire and wheel and tire and take it for a ride. Or well, maybe tomorrow, because it's kind of late now. Thanks for watching i know this has been a long one but i hope you found it useful i just tried to include as much information as possible so it would be a little bit easier for you to do it yourself like and subscribe and i appreciate you watching